In the last chapter, we did a lot of work with quadratic functions. We graphed them, we found that they made parabola type shapes that could be upside down or right side up, like the one that's sketched there. We found their various features, like a line of symmetry or a vertex. Well, we're also tasked with solving quadratic equations, finding the numbers that when we plug them into the equation will work as a solution. And so there are lots of methods that we can use to solve quadratic equations. The one that we're going to focus on at the beginning here is to solve by factoring. And what factoring does is it takes advantage of what we call the zero property of multiplication, where if we multiply two numbers and get zero as an answer, that means either one or the other number that are being multiplied has to be zero. And so if we can break a problem like the ones that we see in front of us into a multiplication question that equals zero, then we can take the different pieces of the problem and say either this one has to equal zero or the other one has to equal zero for this problem to work. So there's several different types of factoring. And the first form is what I call undistributing. This is where we're basically doing the distributive property backwards. This usually happens when we have just two parts to the problem, like we have in all the examples here. You'll notice that up here for a quadratic equation, I've got the three parts, an x squared, an x, and then an integer piece. Usually, factoring by undistributing involves just those first two pieces. The c part is missing. And so, as I look at this first question, I'm trying to see what do I have in common between the two parts of the problem. Sometimes that might just be a variable, sometimes that might be a number, sometimes that might be both. And so in this case here, I can see that both parts of the uh, equation have an x in them. So I'm going to undistribute an x. I'm going to factor out an x. I'm going to set it up to where I have a set of parentheses that I would, in theory, redistribute that x to to get back to my original question. So my task is to try to figure out what needs to be in the parentheses to get back to that original. So x, this x here, times what gets me back to x squared? Well, that would be x. x times x equals x squared. And then I have to answer that same question for the second half of the problem. x times what will get me back to 9, negative 9x. Nine and so that would be negative 9. x times negative 9 would get me back to negative 9x. So this is what I mean by factoring by undistributing. I'm looking to see what do the two parts of the problem have in common, what can I write on the outside of a set of parentheses, and then what needs to be inside those parentheses. So if I was to redistribute everything, I'd get back to my original problem. So once we have the problem factored, now I'm going to take advantage of this zero property of multiplication. Because what we've said is x times this x minus 9 has to equal 0. So that means either x has to equal 0 or x minus 9 has to equal 0. The two things that I'm multiplying together to make an answer of 0, one or the other has to equal 0 for this problem to work. And so on the one hand, I've got x equals 0. That's already solved and isolated. So that's one answer that I have in this question. And then I have this other mini equation that I need to solve. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. And so I get x equals 0 plus 9 is 9. And so this is my other answer to this equation. So if I plug 0 back into the original problem, if we do a little erasing here, we can see that 0 squared minus 9 times 0, we have zeros across the board. So that works. And then if I plug 9 back into the problem, 9 squared is 81 minus 9 times 9 is 81. 81 minus 81 equals 0. So we can see that both of these two answers, 0 and 9, are solutions. So we can go ahead and write them together. They're not an ordered pair. I'm just listing them as the two solutions. In the second example, I'm going to be able to undistribute both a number and a variable. As I look at the two parts to the problem, I can see that I can factor out a 6. 6 divides evenly into both of these pieces. And just like on the previous question, they both have an x in common. Both parts of the problem have an x that's in common. So now I have to figure out 
what needs to be inside the parentheses so that I can get back to my original problem. And so 6x times what equals 6x squared? Well, that's going to be x. 6x times x is indeed x squared. And then I have 6x times what equals negative 24x. Well, 6 times 4 equals 24, so it's going to have to be a negative 4. But I don't need an x here because it's already taken care of by the x that I factored out, that I undistributed out. So here I've succeeded in factoring, in undistributing the expression, turning it from a subtraction problem into a multiplication question. And so I'm going to take each part of the problem, 6x, I'm going to set equal to 0, and the other part, x minus 4, I'm going to set equal to 0. And so now I have these two mini equations that I need to solve. So I'm going to divide both sides by 6 over here, so I'm just going to get x equals 0. And really, as a general rule, any time we undistribute an x, 0 is automatically going to be one of our answers. And then over here, I have to add 4 to both sides. So we get our other answer here is x equals 4. And so like I did on the previous question, I'm just going to write them together. Again, not an ordered pair, just a list of the two solutions, 0 and 4. In the third example, I can't factor at the very outset because I don't have everything piled up on one side and set equal to 0 like I have in the other two examples. So the first thing I'm going to do is pile up everything on the left-hand side of the problem. So I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides. So on the left-hand side, that means I now have 4x squared minus 10x. And then on the other side, since I've gotten rid of everything, it equals 0. So that's a key part of any factoring, is it has to equal 0 on the other side of the equation. So now I need to factor, so I need to look to see what can I undistribute, what divides evenly into both pieces. Now, I don't have uh, 4 that I can undistribute, that doesn't divide evenly into 10, but both those numbers are even, so I can undistribute a 2, and then of course we have an x that's in common in both pieces, so I'm going to undistribute an x as well. And so if I do that, I'm left with 2x, because 2x times 2x is what gets me back to 4x squared. Remember, what goes in the parentheses has to be uh, what I multiply by this 2x on the outside and then get back to the original problem. So 2x times 2x gets me back to 4x squared. And then 2x times what will get me back to 10x? Well, that's going to be minus 5. 2x times negative 5 gets me back to negative 10x. So it's just this idea of reverse distributing or undistributing that we're doing. And so now once we have it rewritten in this multiplication format, I'm going to set each of these pieces equal to 0. So I've got 2x equals 0. So just like on the previous question, I'm going to divide by the number multiplying the x, and I again get 0 as an answer. And then for the other one, I've got to add 5 to both sides. So that leaves me with 2x equals 5. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I'm not a big fan of decimals. As a general rule for us, if there's no decimal in the original question, we shouldn't have decimals in our final answer. So just keep it easy on yourself and just leave your answer as this 5 halves. So that's our second answer in this case, 0 and then 5 halves. So as you can see, the commonality between all three of these examples is we end up with zero as one of our solutions whenever we can undistribute.